Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to talk about something called encodings. So the reason that we want to talk about this is that uh, when we were talking about the Church-Turing thesis, we were saying that uh, algorithms are the same thing as Turing machines. And so if we can build a Turing machine to do something, then uh, we can say that our computers can do the same thing, and vice versa. So the purpose of encodings is to to make these machines into strings so that we can talk about what those machines can do. So if I wanted to present an input to a computer that encodes a DFA in some way, then I can try to answer questions about that DFA, but I need to be able to present it as a string so that I can talk about the language of, say, DFAs that have a certain property, or context-free grammars that have a certain property, or Turing machines that have a certain property. And that will allow us to formulate problems more precisely so that we can say whether or not uh, we can have an algorithm that solves a certain problem. So the purpose of encoding is to encode, surprise, surprise, a machine or whatever, it doesn't really matter what it is, into a string. That's literally all an encoding is. Change Instead of you having a machine itself, you convert it into a string that's equivalent to the original. I should say uh, that too. Equivalent to the original. And what do I mean by equivalent here? I mean that if I give you the string, then you can figure out what machine it is, and and vice versa. If you have the machine, you can make the string from it, and so you can they correspond one and one together. All right, so let's just uh, do an example. So let's say that we have a DFA right here. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, the five parts Q, sigma, delta, Q zero, and F. So the five familiar pieces. So the question is. Uh, how do we encode this as a string? So how do we encode code? Can't spell it code. Encode this as a string. And it turns out there isn't a one specific way of doing things. There are many, many, many. In fact, infinitely many different ways of doing this. So the way that what we want to have is that I want to agree on what the encoding is in advance. But once we agree on it, then it's okay. You can do, you can have anything that you want. Um, so if you agree on the encoding process and what the string actually looks like, then uh, it doesn't actually matter what encoding you pick as long as we agree on it. So uh, we, by we I mean, all of us who are talking about this, we need to agree on the encoding first. But any encoding is okay. I, I should actually say it's not really any encoding, it's any that you could compute. So any computable encoding. So if, if, you, if there's an algorithm to make the string out of it, then that's okay. If it's not possible, then <laughs> that, that's not really helpful. But so as an example, what could we do here? So what we can do, for example, is I could have, say, pound sign, which is a new character. I can list all the states out in a list, pound sign, all the characters out, pound sign, delta, pound sign, what the start state is pound sign, and all the final states uh, listed there with a... So the pound sign is a delimiter. So the input uh, to, the, to whatever we're going to use is going to be that string. So W is going to be this uh, big O string. So uh, how would you actually implement this? So what you would do... So this is a good high level. What would you actually do? So let's just say that we have a pound sign here. How do you actually list the states out? Well, what we'll do is we'll have a numerical value for each of the states. So let's say zero, and then now we need another delimiter to separate what is one state from another state. So maybe comma, so that's a character, 
1, 2, 3, etc. And then for the symbols, we could have them really be anything. So we, we can just name them like uh, 0, we can call them 0, 1, 2, or A, B, C, it doesn't really matter. Uh, then for the transition function, oh, I should actually label these. So this part right here is the state. This part right here is the, the input alphabet. Then for the transition function, what we will do is we will have a triplet, which corresponds to the state that we're in, the, tr the symbol that we're going to read, and what state we're going to go to. So here, let's just say we have a 1, comma, 2, comma, 0. So this would, uh, what this is encoding is delta of, from state 1, reading the 2, is going to result in the state 0. Uh, and then what we'll need is another delimiter to separate between all of the transition uh, trip, transition function triplets. So maybe dollar sign is going to separate those. And then maybe we'll have, let's say, uh, 4, 0, 1. And then another dollar sign here. And then we'll just keep going. So all of this right here is encoding the transition function. And then after that, we'll need to list which state is the start state. And then that's easy. Let's just say it's 2, for example. And then pound sign. Well, then what do we do with the final states? We'll just list them out. So maybe let's say 0, 3, 4. And that's the set of final states, let's say. So what, we'll, what we can do here, so that's Q0 here, and F is the end. So it doesn't have to be in this order. It could be that we list F first or Q first. In fact, you don't even need them to be necessarily in different uh, sections. They could all be in the same section if there is a way to recover what the original machine is. Because if you read this input string, you see, oh, well, this part is the Q part because we agreed to that in advance. This part is the input characters. Here's the transition function. Here's the start state. Here are the final states. Okay, so this works. The, the problem is, well, what if we are allowing ourselves to take arbitrarily many DFAs? So, uh, so how do we encode um, all possible, let's say, DFAs? Because if I want to answer questions about DFAs, uh, I need to be able to uh, represent them all with one machine. So the problem, the reason why this is a problem is we could have any number of states that we want. And so we would need to have arbitrarily many tape characters to represent all of them. And that's just not possible if we have a machine, a single machine to, to take as input all possible uh, representations of DFAs, encodings of DFAs. So the way that we get around this is that uh, we could uh, yeah, here's how we get around it. We encode, so another encoding, uh, all uh, numbers, let's say, all numbers here, as binary integers. And then maybe have a, an additional uh, separator in between. So we do gain a tape character for the separator um, between these, but we... Uh, we don't have, we only need two characters, 0 and 1, let's say, for representing each of these integers. So this would be 0, this would be 1, this would be 1, 0, 1, 1, and then etc. Same for here, same for here, same for here, same for here, same for here. Okay, so that's how we actually get around this. All right, so as long as we can figure out what the machine is, it does not matter what the um, the format of the, uh, yeah, so if, if, it doesn't matter what the format of the five pieces are or what the format would be for a context-free grammar or for a DF or a Turing machine or really anything. As long as we can somehow agree onto what it is in advance, then we're okay. So if we want to talk about the string here itself, the string itself 
is we're going to write this as angle brackets, then the name of the DFA. So here, angle brackets means encoding. So that's what the angle brackets means. And uh, what the D written here is the name of the DFA in this case. And we could uh, augment this if we wanted to with um, other things. So let's say, let's say we have the DFA D and we have an input W. So let's say, for example, that, so this thing is a DFA and this thing is um, a string, just some string. Then what we could do, for example, is we could write this out as pound sign Q, pound sign sigma, pound sign delta, pound sign Q0, pound sign F, and then pound sign W written afterwards. And that is totally okay. Um, so as long as we can find where each of these pieces are and uh, unambiguously figure out what they really were, because the, it's just a string, it's not a machine anymore, then it's okay. We could um, have, for example, we could have two DFAs or three or whatever. As long as we can find some way of representing both of them uh, or all the pieces that are involved in the encoding, we're okay. So for example, what I could do for this one is I list the states for the first one out, then the, the states for the second one out, and etc. I can interleave them if I wanted to or have them be totally separate. So like all the first DFA bits go first and then all the second DFA bits go second. Either one is okay as long as we can figure out what the original machines were in this case. So those are encodings. They're just transforming machines into a string representation. If you've programmed in Java before, it's the two string function basically. If you program in Python, it's the dunder stir function. It's just a way of making the machines into strings, a string representation, so that we can talk about the language of all strings representing these machines uh, and then say something about that language. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your comments, uh, leave thoughts and questions about encodings down into the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring. My email is in the description box below. And as always, I'll see you next time.